Right, so on this uh, video clip, we just want to show you how to use separating fluids to extract uh, looked up solutions with quantities of ether, ether acetate, DCM, or chlorophyll. So, how to work your reaction up, how to use a separated fluid. So, I've got, I've got in this view covered um, five separated fluids laid out. So, just to talk first about how to use a separating funnel. Um, when you get the separating funnel, make sure the, the key can rotate around so it can it rotates. I mean, sometimes this is already getting a bit sticky. If it's stuck in position like this, that's no good for you. So after filming this, this will go back to the to the technical support and we'll try and get the key out. That's, that's jammed, it won't move. But for this illustration, um, you need to make sure it moves. You need to make sure as, as well that the key doesn't wobble out of position, so make sure it's tight. Make sure it moves, make sure it's tight. And um, how do you clamp it? Well, you can see that these are clamped on these kind of O-rings here, but here's just the Boston clamp. If you were to clamp in this me mechanism, it's best to clamp via the neck of the flask and do it uh, firm and secure but don't tighten too much in case you shatter the neck of the flask but oops and I nearly dropped it then didn't I there we go so that's that's nice and secure but I personally prefer using these these kind of o-rings so you clamp as appropriate and you can quite easily take in and out and up and down and, and, and move the glassware out of position quite easily on this one I prefer using the o-rings so I recommend trying to get these o-rings in position and clamp them onto the stand. Like anything else, if you're clamping glassware onto a stand, make sure that the stand is secure and the glassware is in the centre of the weight on the stand. So that's a good position for clamping. What I don't want to see inside of a lab maybe is that there's your glassware being clamped. If this was a bigger separating funnel, a litre, two litres, and that was filled, with solvent, you do sometimes find that it can rock and wobble around. So we don't want it clamped like that. We want it to be clamped in this position. And as well, make sure that you can get any beakers underneath or appropriately conical flasks underneath as you need to continue. So make sure it's clamped at the correct height as appropriate. So there's four real solvents we work up with in organic chemistry practicals and I've placed them in, in, in twos and tandems. This is ethyl acetate and ether and then the next two in tandem are chloroform and DCM. And notice that I'm working from smaller bottles here, not big two and a half litre Winchesters, we work from smaller bottles. Let me tell you about the densities and uh, the density of ether and ethyl acetate is, is numerically less than one about 0 0.7, 0 0.78 I believe, possibly wrong on that, but the densities are less than water. So in a phase with water, these will be the top layer. So these will be the top layers when they're mixed with water. These two solvents have a density greater than one, about 1.1, 1.2 I believe. You have to check that, uh, my memory is not too good anymore, remembering the exact quantities, uh, new, numerical values, but these are denser solvents than water so they will sit as a bottom phase in contact with water so let's show you first of all how to work up the reaction if it was to say extract with an organic solvent like ether or ethyl acetate so we're going to then use this as ether as our solvent so let's say this is a worked up solution it's an organic and possibly some aqueous solution so your reaction says quench with water or ice or ammonium by ammonium carbonate or sorry, ammonium chloride, sodium bicarbonate, something like that. Work the reaction up. So you'll have an aqueous organic phase, and I've put it obviously with copper sulfate to show that it's aqueous. Let's now take this as our separating funnel, make sure that the key is secure. When you first put in the solution in the separating funnel, you don't want this to leak and run over the matting or the base of the, 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 the set funnel, or, or sorry, the stand. So put a glass aperture underneath, maybe a, a flask. So anything that does drizzle out is collected, you can always recover it that way. So now, make sure you have a separate, uh, uh, sorry, filter funnel in place in the set funnel. Pour in the solution, and if it's an aqueous workup, 
you might just want to make sure that you transfer the remaining solution in just get a touch of water maybe move it over but we always want the organic products out in organic chemistry so now I recommend take a bit of the extracting solvent like ether and rinse round the side of the glassware pour in rinse round the side of the glassware pour in so that wasn't a good rinse then so make sure all the inside of the glassware has contact with the organic solvent pour in and then when you're ready just wash the funnel with some of the solvent so anything organic is transferred out of here from the neck of the funnel into the flask and now it might say to you right extract with 25 mil of ether it might say extract with three lots of 25 mil of ether so we'll take our first quantity of ether that's 25 mil and we'll put into place we'll pour in and then we take the funnel away put the stopper in and when you're swirling on the first occasion you might have a bit of a, a kickback or a fizz so give it one two three shakes away from your face pointing towards the back of the fume cupboard open the key here the fizzing one two three S swirl open the key close the key one two three open the key here the fizz and that's the way to do it so it's a gentle swirl it's not a vicious kind of motion not good so once we do that we've now got the bottom aqueous phase as clearly as seen bottom aqueous phase and as well we have the top organic phase so just put this mat in at the back bottom aqueous phase top organic phase so we now want to run down the aqueous layer we put it in, back into the beaker perhaps oops see I nearly shot over then the organic then needs to go into the flask so when you're at the point of thinking that the two phases are near the key kind of slow down the motion of travel of the solvent and close the tap and do and do that with a bit more care and detail than I've just shown you so we've put all the organic into place here let's just quickly again put this back into the funnel put it back into place put it back in so we'll extract with our second lot of 25 mil so again it'd be rude not to rinse the inside of the flask with some ether one two pipettes worth put it in quick rinse the funnel or sorry the inside of the filter funnel next lot of 25 mil throw it in and then back again with a swirl vent it away from your face away from anyone else's faces as well one two three vent it and then you're free then to collect the bottom layer again as 25 mil and the top layer can go into there so we'll just very so quickly do this and just show you that when you get to the point where the two phases are kind of getting near the key just be careful that you don't allow any of the organic top layer to go into the beaker so that's fine we put that underneath the organic ether layer can go into there so that's how you that's how you wash with ether so maybe your practical protocol says take this ether layer now and put it back in here and wash with hydroxide or acid or water and brine and so on and so forth so you need to obviously put this back in into the set funnel and carry on as your procedure dictates but I just want to show you this in terms of this is not not with copper sulfate in so there are two phases here and I'll put this white at the back so you can hopefully see that there's a bottom layer aqueous and a top layer and I've marked on with a pen line the distinguishing phase boundary if that is not settled down in your wash you might possibly wish to put some brine in maybe brine solution or some sodium chloride and, and swirl the funnel together because you, if you get emulsions this stops the two phases from settling out so if it's very milky like a cloudy um, kind of solution and it doesn't want to settle out in two phases a bit of brine either as a solution or sodium chloride in there 
help to settle out the two phases. So that's washing with ether or ether acetate. Likewise the same with DCM. So again if we were to do this with DCM, this is a bit more simple to illustrate. Here's my worked up solution. So again, what do I need to do? Well I'll put my I'll put my uh, uh, flask underneath, we'll put in now the solution and then we'll choose at this point some DCM we'll rinse the inside of the flask out with DCM so we'll swirl some DCM to the inside of the flask put in the funnel the next mix with DCM to wash the inside out there we go we might now want to wash the inside of the funnel out that's fine we now get our 25 mil for example if it says in your protocol wash with three lots of 25 mil get your first lot of 25 mil of dcm put it in place and now swirl one two three away from your face anyone else vent one, two, three, away from your face and anyone else's, vent, one, two, three, vent. Let it settle down. We need to keep the bottom layer now, which is the organic layer, and this obviously can be rinsed into like the conical flask, or sorry, or the, yes, the conical flask, so now it's just settling down, so we can run down DCM. And the beauty of this is because the aqueous phase stays in the set funnel, we don't have to refeed it back into the funnel. We can just add our next quantity of 25 mil of solvent. There we go. Put the funnel back in place. Pop it back in. And then swirl. Oops. Appropriate. So one, two, three, vent, one, two, three, vent, let it settle and you can feed the DCM into here. When you're doing any reaction, DCM, chloroform, ether, acetate, ether, never throw away the aqueous phase until you're entirely happy you've recovered the product right at the end of the process. Keep aqueous phases, so keep it at that point, keep the aqueous phase and put it into a beaker, don't throw it away. But the final thing to kind of say to you on this one is that if you if you need to very quickly uh, dry the solution, all we can do now is to say the organic phase, if it's been washed with water, dry and all, we're happy with it, just as an extraction, we need to dry it. How do we dry it? We take some mag sulfate and we make sure that the mag sulfate floats in solution. So this is an ether. Layer, we put some mag sulfate in and we swirl it. So we're looking to see if the mag sulfate floats around. We look to see as well whether we feel any waters at the bottom as droplets and this is quite clumpy and cloudy at the moment so we feel some water still in the bottom of this ether layer. So we'll put some more mag sulfate in. Be careful by doing this so we don't spill the mag sulfate over the fume cupboard. So just a touch more maybe well and we let it and we see little clouds of mag sulfate floating so we don't want to see water droplets we want to see a clearer solution and when we swirl it we want to see these little clouds of mag sulfate in solution that settle down and that is dry that's good that's a good quantity of mag sulfate what you don't want to do is to throw the entire bottle of mag sulfate into there to dry a small volume so this shows you today how to use the separating funnels as well. So we'll just return back to this one about the, the chloroform and DCM layer. Look at this one. This is chloroform at the, the bottom. This is the top aqueous layer. So again, you need to be able to spot the two phases. Okay, so again, if it doesn't settle out, put some brine in, either as a solution or sodium chloride solid, give it a swirl in the funnel, let it settle out. DCM chloroform bottom layer, aqueous top. Okay, and that concludes our little video clip.